If we assume the capacitor or the inductor will exist across a single grid cell at the base of the crane, then what we need to do is account for either the current or the voltage of the lumped circuit element across that grid cell. I'm going to start with the integral form of Ampere's law, as shown here. The right side of Ampere's law includes all the currents that may exist in space. So this is could be a current, a conduction current, and also if we have an antenna there, it could be a source current. And here we have displacement current. So the displacement current we can also write as the surface integral of epsilon naught dE dt dot n hat ds. And the conduction current is jc dot n hat ds, which we can also write as sigma e dot n hat ds. And so this might be like if we had a dipole antenna current flowing along an antenna. So that's an example, IS current. As a result, in order to account for a circuit element like a resistor, capacitor, inductor, or even nonlinear circuit elements, we can add the current corresponding to this circuit element to the right side of Ampere's law. So here, I might say this is equal to I conduction current a source current, we can have a displacement current, and we might even have current from a circuit element, which I'll put as CE. Now in our case, we're not going to be modeling a source at the same location as our circuit element. So for this particular grid cell where we're going to put our circuit element, we're going to say this is equal to zero. And also, we'll model, we'll model our circuit element in free space. So this conduction current, we're not going to have any conductivity there, we're going to have uh, not relating to our capacitor, so we're, that's going to be set equal to zero also. As a result, we'll just have the displacement current and the lumped circuit element current. So here I've rewritten Ampere's law with only the displacement current and our circuit element current. Now Microsoft Word suddenly decided I needed to have color in my equations, so the blue versus black doesn't have any special meaning here. Since we originally derived the FDTD update equations from the pointwise form of Maxwell's equations, let's rewrite this Ampere's law here in pointwise form with just the displacement current and the lumped element circuit current. To convert to pointwise form, we're going to use Stokes' theorem. And so that will allow us to rewrite this line integral as a surface integral of h cross a uh, curl of h ds. And now uh, we have the surface integral of the displacement current dot n hat ds. And now I'm going to rewrite the circuit element current as the current density of that circuit element flowing through that surface s. Now all the terms have a surface integral, and so we can equate what is inside of each of those surface integrals. So I can have the curl of h is equal to epsilon naught dE dt plus j c e. So now we have the pointwise form of Ampere's law. For our application, if we want to put a capacitor between the crane and the ground, we should model the capacitor on the EZ component at I max divided by 2, J max divided by 2, and at K equal to 1. So I can get rid of the vector over this E field. So I can write that as DEZ now. And I can, I, so I gave it a Z subscript because we're going to be putting our capacitor and inductor across the EZ field. And also in this case, J, C, E will be flowing in the Z direction, so I'm going to put J, Z. And for consistency, when we take the curl of H, we should take the Z component. And let's also put C, E here, because that's for the circuit element. Now if we first consider a capacitor, 
let's use the fact that I C E is equal to C D V D T in the Z direction. That's just a basic relationship between the voltage and the current for a capacitor. And so if we're going to use this in the pointwise form here of Ampere's law, we need to convert this to current density for this a particular grid cell and orientation. So to do this, we can use the fact that the cross-sectional area through which JCE is flowing is delta x by delta y, because it's flowing in the z direction. So then we can rewrite this as I C E over delta X delta Y. And so that is C using this over delta X delta Y and DV DT in the Z direction. Putting all this together, we have what's shown here. See if you can take this equation and use the same strategies we have been using throughout this course to develop an update equation for the EZ component at the base of the crane. So at n plus 1 and here at the base of the crane where the capacitor will be.